Cinderella. This is the story of Cinderella. Once upon a time, there was a family formed by a dad, a mom, and a beautiful girl. For many years, every one of them was very happy, till the day the mother died and she had to go to heaven. After a while, the father remarried with a very mean lady who became the girl's stepmother. A little while after that, the father also died, and the girl had to live with her stepmother and her two daughters. Since then, the girl was forced to work very hard, and as she was always dirty and covered with cinders, she was nicknamed Cinderella. Cinderella was in charge of every chore in the house. She cleaned, swept, and kept the house tidy while her stepmother and stepsisters treated her really bad. One day, an invitation from the king to attend a ball in the palace arrived to the house. Every family on town had to attend, since it was time for the prince to get a girlfriend. The stepmother dressed her two daughters with beautiful dresses for the ball and sent Cinderella to do more house chores. Cinderella swiftly finished all the chores she was sent to do, but when she finished, it was already too late. Everyone had gone to the ball. So she sat on a stool and cried in despair. Suddenly, next to her appeared a fairy who greeted her kindly. Hello, Cinderella. I am your fairy godmother. Why are you so sad? And Cinderella replied, Because I couldn't go to the ball and I've got nothing to wear. Then the fairy cast a spell and dressed Cinderella with a beautiful dress and turned a pumpkin into a carriage turned the dog into a person, and she turned the little mice into horses. <laughs> and just before the girl was off to the ball, she said, Cinderella, you must remember that you have to come home at midnight, because the spell will break down then, and everything will go back to normal. Cinderella arrived at the palace, and everyone looked at her in astonishment. The prince asked her to dance and fell in love with her. Suddenly, the clock struck midnight and Cinderella ran off home so quickly that a shoe fell on the way. The prince couldn't stop her, but he did find the glass shoe that fell off. The next day, the prince announced to the town that he would marry the girl who would fit into the glass shoe. When the prince's envoys arrived to the stepmother's house for them to try on the shoe, the lady locked up Cinderella in a closet so she wouldn't be able to try it. But the mice, who were friends with Cinderella, looked for the key and opened the door. Then, when Cinderella finally was going to try the shoe, the stepmother broke it. Cinderella searched for the other shoe, and when everyone saw it, they realized that she was the girl at the ball. The envoys took Cinderella to the palace. And when the prince saw her, he fell in love with her. Finally, Cinderella and the prince got married and lived happily ever after. The End Little Red Riding Hood and the Wolf this is the story of Little Red Riding Hood and the Wolf. Once upon a time, there was a little girl who lived in a house in the forest. As she wore Red Riding Hood, she was called Little Red Riding Hood. One day, her mother made a food basket for her grandma, who lived on the other side of the forest and was very sick. Little Red Riding Hood took the basket and went to her grandma's house. On the way, she found a wolf who asked her, Hello, Little Red Riding Hood. What are you doing in this dangerous forest? And she replied, I'm going to my sick grandma's house. Then the wolf said, Go this way, it's shorter. And while Little Red Riding Hood went that way, 
the wolf took a shortcut and arrived faster to Grandma's house. When Grandma saw the wolf, she ran away and locked herself in the closet. Then the wolf came in, took the lady's clothes, and dressed as her. Quickly, he got into the bed and waited for Little Red Riding Hood to arrive. When Little Red Riding Hood came in, she greeted her grandmother. Hello, Grandma! How are you? And the disguised wolf replied, Very well, Little Red Riding Hood. Little Red Riding Hood saw that her grandma was very different, so she said, Grandma, Grandma, why do you have such big hands? And the wolf replied, To hug you better. And Little Red Riding Hood asked, Grandma, Grandma, why do you have such big ears? To hear you better. And Little Red Riding Hood asked again, Grandma, Grandma, why do you have such big teeth? And the wolf replied, To eat you better. Then Little Red Riding Hood started to scream, and a hunter who was nearby heard her and came to her rescue. He saw the wolf and shot him. Boom, boom! And Wolf got scared, ran out, and never came back. Little Red Riding Hood took her grandma out of the closet, hugged her, and helped her get in bed. And gave her the food basket she brought from home. And everyone lived happily ever after. The End Once upon a time, there was three little pigs who lived in a nice forest where there also was a big, bad, hungry wolf. One day, the little pigs decided to build houses to protect themselves. The first one built a house made of straw, and the second one built his out of wood, but the third one built his house with bricks. One day, the wolf knocked at the first pig's door and growled, Open the door or I will blow and blow and I'll bring down your house. The little pig said, I won't open the door. Then the wolf blew and blew and the straw house collapsed. The little pig ran out in despair and went hiding on his brother's wood house. The wolf ran after him, stood in front of the wood house and growled. Open the door, little pigs, or I will blow and blow and I'll bring down your house. And the little pigs reply, Go away, wolf, we won't open the door. Then the wolf blew and blew and the house collapsed. The two little pigs ran out in despair to the brick house. And there they hided with their brother. The wolf followed them, stood in front of the house and growled. 
open the door or I will blow and blow and I'll bring down your house. And the piggies reply, go away, we are not going to open the door. And then the wolf blew and blew with so much more strength than before. And the house didn't collapse. The little pigs laughed at the wolf <laughs> and told him, Wolf, you won't be able to bring down the house. And the wolf got mad and climbed to the house's roof and started coming down the chimney. But the little pigs made a trap. They placed a cauldron full of hot oil under the chimney. When the wolf fell into the hot oil, he got burned and ran away to the forest. The little pigs were very happy and never saw the wolf again. The end. This is the story of the Snow Queen. Once upon a time, there was a faraway kingdom named Arendelle. On that place, the summers were splendid, the sun was always shining, and people were very happy. The queen of this beautiful place was Queen Elsa. She had magic powers, and she was able to create ice and snow, but she didn't know how to control these powers. On her coronation night, Elsa ran away from the kingdom, and without knowing it, she froze every place on her way. All the people of Arendelle were quite scared, since if the storm wouldn't stop, they will wind up frozen. Anna, Elsa's little sister, decided to go look for her and convince her to stop the spell of eternal winter. On the way, she met Kristoff, an ice salesman that decided to go with her and search for the queen. On this difficult adventure, they met with Olaf, a nice snowman with which Anna and her sister used to play when they were children, who also decided to go with them and help them reach the top of the icy mountain where Elsa's ice castle was. When Anna met with Elsa, she begged her to return Summer to the kingdom. But Elsa said that she couldn't do that because she didn't know how to control her magic. The queen told Anna to go, but since she wouldn't do it, both sisters began to argue, and accidentally, Elsa threw snow right to Anna's heart. Then Kristoff took Anna away from the ice castle, while her heart was beginning to get frozen, little by little. Kristoff was very sad, and he decided to take Anna with his friends, the trolls, but they told him they couldn't cure her because the ice had touched her heart and the only thing that could save her was an act of true love. Anna asked Kristoff to take her to Arendelle, since there was a handsome prince named Hans who wanted to marry her. Kristoff was in love with Anna, but to him the most important thing was that she was saved. However, when they got to the kingdom, they found out that Prince Hans was no longer there, because he had gone looking for Anna in the ice castle. When Hans got to Elsa's castle, there was a huge fight that ended up with the prince's victory, so he took Elsa prisoner and took her back to Arendelle. There he locked her up and lied to her, saying that her sister died because of the snow magic. But Anna was still alive, even though her heart was getting more and more frozen. When Anna finally met with Prince Hans, she told him that the only thing that could save her was a kiss of true love. But he refused to kiss her and locked her up as a prisoner too. At that moment, Anna realized that he didn't really love her and that the only thing he wanted was the kingdom. When Queen Elsa woke up, she created a strong blizzard to escape. When Kristoff saw this, he rushed back to the kingdom to save Anna, since he realized she was still in danger. Elsa thought that Anna died because of her, so she got very sad. In that moment, Prince Hans grabbed a sword to kill her, but Anna got between them at the exact moment the spell was being completed. So Anna turned into an ice statue.
Then Elsa stopped the blizzard, hugged her sister, and started to apologize while crying out of sadness. Just when everything seems lost, the prophecy began to be fulfilled. Pure love could defrost a frozen heart. Anna began defrosting, and thus everyone realized that true love is stronger than any magic. Finally, Elsa was able to control her powers, and she and her sister Anna lived happily ever after in the beautiful kingdom of Arendelle. This is the story of Hansel and Gretel. Once upon a time, there was a very poor family who lived in the woods. The father was a lumberjack and had two children named Hansel and Gretel. One day, they had nothing to eat, so their parents began to worry because they thought their children would starve to death. The mother thought there was only one choice, to leave them in the woods near the king's palace for someone to pick them up and take care of them. Hansel and Gretel couldn't sleep, and they overheard everything their parents said. The girl started to cry, but her brother thought of a way to come back home, since they preferred to starve there with their own parents. The next morning, the mother woke them up to go look for some fruits and eggs, and Hansel put on his pocket a piece of hard bread. On the way, Hansel dropped the breadcrumbs so they would be able to know where their house was. When they were near the palace, the parents told the children to rest and that they were going to look for something to eat. The children fell asleep, but when they woke up, they realized it was nighttime. Gretel started to cry, and Hansel told her, Don't worry, sister, we're going to follow the road I made with breadcrumbs. But no matter how hard they searched for the breadcrumbs, they didn't find them because the birds had eaten them all. They were walking a long time till they fell asleep again. The next day, they saw a house made entirely of sweets. The house was made of cookies, candies, and chocolates. They were very hungry, so they ate almost the entire house. But at that time, an old lady, who really was a wicked witch, appeared and she wanted to eat Hansel. The witch locked up Hansel on a cage. She wanted Hansel to get really fat so she could eat him. Every single day, the witch asked the boy to show her his arm to touch and see if he was fat enough. But Hansel is quite clever and he gave her a chicken bone and the witch said, oh, he is too skinny. And she kept feeding him every day more and more food. Gretel, his little sister, obeyed the witch she cleaned the house every day and did whatever the witch told her to do. One day, the witch got fed up and said, I don't care how skinny the boy is. I'm going to eat him today. Then she told Gretel, Start the fire with firewood, because today I'm going to cook your little brother. But Gretel said, It's just that I don't know how to start a fire with firewood. The witch then replied, Then I'll do it myself. When she was starting up the fire, Gretel pushed her into the oven and opened her little brother's cage. Before getting out of there, they realized that the witch had plenty of money, gold and jewelry, so the kids put on some of her stuff into their pockets. Hansel and Gretel got out of there running. When they got home, they found their father chopping wood. The kids showed him everything that they had found, and they came back home happily all together once more. The end. The Little Mermaid. This is the story of the Little Mermaid. Once upon a time, there was a little mermaid named Ariel who lived at the bottom of the sea. She was the daughter of the mighty Triton, king of the sea. She felt a lot of curiosity for the human world. With her fish friends Flounder, Ariel collected human things. On the other hand, King Triton didn't like the idea of Ariel going to the surface. That's why his helper Sebastian Crab was always paying lots of attention to where Ariel was going. One night, Ariel, Flounder, and Sebastian went up to the surface of the sea. 
and watched a celebration in honor of Prince Eric's birthday. Just by seeing him, Ariel fell in love. Suddenly, a storm hit and the ship sank. Ariel managed to save Eric, who was unconscious. After taking him to land, the Little Mermaid sang a beautiful song, but leaves before he wakes. When he recovers, he is fascinated by the Little Mermaid's voice. He tries to look for her, but in vain. Ariel went back to the ocean now, more convinced than ever of wanting to go with the humans. Her father, Triton, was very mad and forbade her to return to the surface. But the Little Mermaid went to visit Ursula, the Witch of the Sea. She told Ariel that she could turn her human and proposed her a deal, turning her human for three days in exchange for her voice. Ariel agreed, and she was turned into a human being. Ariel needed the next three days to get true love's kiss from Eric. Otherwise, she will spend all her life to live in Ursula's cave. Eric finally found Ariel on a beach, and he took her to his castle without knowing she was the one who rescued him when the ship sank. Ariel spent beautiful days alongside Eric. They almost kissed, but Ursula meddled to avoid it. The witch decided to disguise herself as a human under the name of Vanessa, who, besides using Ariel's voice, put a spell on the prince so he would fall in love with her. Next morning, Ariel found out that Eric and Vanessa were about to get married. But thanks to Scuttle the Seagull, Ariel found out that Eric was being played by Ursula. The Little Mermaid got to the wedding place inside a barrel. Meanwhile, Sebastian told Triton about what's happening, while Scuttle interrupts the wedding with his sea friends. In the middle of all the chaos, Ursula lost Ariel's voice, which was inside a necklace in her chest. But Ariel manages to recover it. Thus, the spell under Ursula had cast over the prince was broken. Eric kissed Ariel in a heartbeat, but this wasn't fast enough, and Ariel went back to being a mermaid. And also Ursula, the witch, kidnapped the little mermaid and took her to her cave. Triton demanded the witch give her daughter back, but the only possible arrangement was that the king take Ariel's place in the cave. The King Triton accepted the deal. Her daughter Ariel was freed. The King was transformed into a tiny monster. On that moment, Eric arrived, hurting Ursula in order to protect Ariel. Furious, the witch turned into a giant monster, getting bigger and bigger. Ursula created a giant storm with a huge whirlpool. With it, she tried to kill Eric and Ariel. In the end, Eric managed to fatally hurt Ursula with his ship. Ursula dies and starts letting out some kind of smoke, with which King Triton and some others return to their normal selves. Triton, again the king of the sea, was convinced of the love of Eric and Ariel. Ariel came out of the sea, turned into a human being, and goes towards Eric. Thanks to her father, they got married on board of a boat in front of all their sea friends and her dear father. The Little Mermaid This is the story of the Little Mermaid. Once upon a time, there was a little mermaid named Ariel who lived at the bottom of the sea. She was the daughter of the mighty Triton, king of the sea. She felt a lot of curiosity for the human world. With her fish friends Flounder, Ariel collected human things. On the other hand, King Triton didn't like the idea of Ariel going to the surface. That's why his helper Sebastian Crab was always paying lots of attention to where Ariel was going. One night, Ariel, Flounder, and Sebastian went up to the surface of the sea and watched a celebration in honor of Prince Eric's birthday. Just by seeing him, Ariel fell in love. Suddenly, a storm hit and the ship sank. Ariel managed to save Eric, who was unconscious. 
After taking him to land, the little mermaid sang a beautiful song, but leaves before he wakes. When he recovers, he is fascinated by the little mermaid's voice. He tries to look for Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. This is the story of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Once upon a time, there was a big and beautiful kingdom in which lived a king and queen. They had a gorgeous daughter with black hair and fair skin who they named Snow White. With the years, the princess grew up, becoming more and more beautiful and kind. But sadly, her mother died and had to go to heaven. After a while, the king got married with a new queen, who turned out to be an evil witch. One day, the witch asked her magic mirror a question. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the most beautiful woman in this kingdom? And the mirror said, The most beautiful woman in this kingdom is Snow White. Then the witch queen got very angry. She ordered a soldier to take Snow White away from the kingdom and kill her with a knife. The soldier obeyed the queen. He took Snow White to the forest. But he wasn't able to kill her because the princess was a very nice person. Then he said, Go away, Snow White. I'll spare your life. But don't ever come back because the queen rich wants to kill you. Go away now. Snow White ran and ran with all her strength to the middle of the forest till she was very tired. Then far away she saw a tiny house and decided to get closer. When she came in, she saw that everything was quite small and as she was tired, she laid down on a little bed and fell asleep. Soon after, seven dwarfs came into their house. When they saw Snow White, they got surprised and said, What is this girl doing here? After a while, Snow White became close friends with the seven dwarfs. She cooked for them, helped them, and danced with them. But one day, the Queen Witch found out that Snow White was alive. So she took a secret potion and turned herself into an old lady to be able to go to the dwarf's house without being noticed. The witch knocked on that little house door, and when Snow White opened it, she saw an old lady who was the witch in disguise. Then the witch said, Beautiful child, take this delicious apple. I'm certain that you have never tried something like this before. Snow White took the apple and bit it, without knowing the evil witch had poisoned the apple. Then she fell on the floor in a deep slumber and never woke up again. The little dwarfs got very sad and decided to place her on a flower bed. One day, a prince came to the forest on a beautiful horse. And when he saw Snow White, he fell in love with her. and decided to kiss her. And Snow White woke up because the kiss broke the witch's spell. The prince and Snow White lived happily ever after. And the witch got so mad, she broke the mirror and never was heard of again. The End The Wolf and the Seven Little Goats This is the story of the Wolf and the Seven Little Goats. Once upon a time, there were seven little goats who lived with their mother at the forest. Near that place, there was also a mean wolf. One day, their mother went out to look for food, and she left the seven little goats at home alone. When the wolf realized that the little goats were alone, he went running to the house, knocked at the door, knock, 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 and said, Let me in, little goats. Mama is back and she brought food. 
The little goats peeked from beneath the door, and when they saw the wolf's paws, they realized that it wasn't their mother. Then the little goats replied, No, we won't open the door, because you are a mean wolf who's going to eat us. The wolf got angry and began to think how he could get inside the little goat's house. So he decided to cover their paws with flour so they would look as white as the goat's legs. Then he came back, knocked at the door, knock, 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 and said, Little goats, let me in. Mama is back and she brought food. The little goats peeked from beneath the door and saw that who knocked had white legs. So they opened the door thinking that her mother had come back. Then the wolf chased the little goats. He ate all the goats that he could find and ran into the woods. But the smallest goat of all of them managed to hide behind the clock and he was safe. When Mama Goat came back, the little goats ran off their hiding place to tell her how the wolf had eaten all of his little brothers. Mama got very angry. She took a pair of scissors and went with the little goat to look for the wolf. On the forest, there was a lake, and they found the wolf there, sleeping without suspecting anything. Then the goat approached silently, and carefully she opened his belly with the scissors and freed all of the little goats. After that, she put a lot of rocks inside the wolf's belly and sewed it with a needle and thread. When the wolf woke up, he had a very big belly, a belly filled with nothing but rocks and he was very thirsty. He got to the lake to drink some water, and there he fell. So Mama Goat returned home with her seven little goats, and the wolf never ever bothered them again. The End <laughs>